Okay, welcome everybody to the Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop. Um, my name is Rick Cramond. I'll be one of the co-hosts today with Kevin Devaney, and we'll be uh, talking with Mr. Kesh of the Spaceship Institute, and uh, he'll be showing us things, um, the wonders of the universe uh, brought to us uh, with the eyes of a child, basically. And uh, we'll continue on with what we learned last week with um, how um, things are created in the universe and how the, the uh, magnetic plasma and fields interact. Um, I think we're ready to go. Is Kevin, would you like to um, say something to add to this workshop at this point? The advice for myself is that I learned um, because you know, Mr. Kesh said something really, really fundamentally important. He said that all is interconnected. And, um, well, and I learned, you know, how magnetic fields either repel or attract one another. Um, of course, I would be more, you know, more more curious about knowing why. Uh, but, you know, it's the beginning, so... Um, it's really hard, you know, from a matter-based uh, scientific perception to a, to a non-matter. And I think that's the problem a lot of people have. This is, I think, what Mr. Cash means when he says, you know, people cannot accept their own existence. So, yeah, maybe we can go along those lines. But thank you very much, Mr. Cash. Oh, you're welcome. See if we can enlighten you a little bit further today. Uh, I received uh, some emails that the adults learn more from the children. Uh, you're breaking up, Mr. Kish. Hello? Okay, for the folks on live stream, we seem to have a bit of a problem with the uh, connection at the Spaceship Institute. We just lost them temporarily. Mm. As long as Mr. Kish is not online again, I mean... Uh, would you have a position on that? What I just said, Rick. I mean, do you do you do you agree with me with uh, with the fundamental questions that you know that arise for a lot of people? What are the questions? Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you repeat <laughs> that, uh, Kevin? Pretend you're lost, but you're still on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm expecting like a, you know a state of evolution any minute or any second right now, but and and it's happening and it's you know when I listen to all those workshops, not only this one but the other ones I told previously, Rick, uh, is that you know there's it's going fast and faster. This is this is really what what you mean uh, probably by saying never in, in the history of mankind has been you know so much knowledge and science and technological understanding be transferred, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah, but the thing is, um, your generation and my generation, and uh, maybe in some cases our parents' generation, are the only generation in mankind who speaks about current and voltage and uh, um, all sorts of things. So, um, if you would have spoken to our great-grandfathers, they would have said, Atom, what? Or they would have said, no, nothing is there. It's just a, it's, it's a fantasy and it's all of, uh, lies. Hmm. Uh, it's our generation <coughs> who has come to see more and understand more with a new line of communications. Uh, I've said this before, it's what we can accept according to our own understanding. When I was in Tehran five years ago, a guy said, um, my father, when he came from Moscow about 50, 60 years ago plus, and he said, in Russia, they have a metal which flies. And everyone said, you're crazy. This is impossible. You're, you know, you're going to mental going to Russia and coming back. <laughs> and after a few couple of years, they saw that metal bird, we call it aeroplane, appeared in Tehran. So, it's what we have accepted, which is the difficult part to reject, because otherwise we, we, we have to um, admit in our own shortcoming and not understanding the to totality. And this is one of the reasons we do these programs for children, is that we put the right seed of understanding of the creation, physics, chemistry, biology, that 
when they are taught other lines, they become judge of the knowledge themselves. And this is the whole thing. You said to, just uh, at the beginning, how the field interacts, what is gravity and what is not. If we look at this uh, set of magnets, these are series of magnets put together to make like a field of uh, magnetic field. So, what happened in this uh, thing? One of the reasons is because his brother is near here, so he's trying to play with it. So, what happened is that the field, this is, looks like a elongated plasma, it's more like a, a ray of light, because ray of light is a plasma too. So, what happened, this ray of magnetic field coming out of this plasma, goes with the highest speed in the direction of the arrow, the head. But, as it moves, it comes in touch with other magnetic fields, and in the center there are other magnetic fields. If you have two similar magnets, you see, if the size is the right way, they, what they do, they attract each other. What is this, what this is attraction is? The attraction is like a tunnel. You have a tunnel, and what goes in the tunnel has to come out of the tunnel. So, if you have a one-way tunnel in your place, in your city, you find out the cars cannot go through opposite way, because it's one way. And this is how the magnetic fields are in any shape or form in plasma condition. So, what comes out in interaction with the other fields in the environment, because the universe, there is nowhere in the universe that we can find no magnetic field. They are there, different strength, different um, powers that they, they show themselves. So, as the magnetic field comes out of this ring, it has to interact with the magnetic field which is going in here. So, it's a one-way system, a tunnel. A car comes out of the tunnel, and it has to go in another tunnel. He has no other choice, because that's how he's been set. So, what happens? So many fields come in, from here to here, and they have two choices. If this one is in the same direction, so they can go in. So, when they go in, whatever comes out of this one, Broke off. Hello. Oops, yes. Rick. Yes, we seem to have lost the Spaceship Institute again there for a brief time. I'm sure they'll reconnect. This is thrilling. <laughs> okay, we get to carry on our conversation from before, I guess, Kevin. No, I just wanted yeah, to know. Oops, your oops, 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 here he goes John, again. Are you on? We are back. Yeah, yeah. Every every time Kevin and I try to get a conversation going here, you keep interrupting. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want us to go back and come tomorrow morning? And <laughs> no, that's okay. We'll go off somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, have a nice coffee. <laughs> Thank you. So, what happens is that the fields <laughs> attract each other, and what comes out of one has. Okay, well, we just go with the flow here, and they'll they'll they might keep fading in and out. We only may get parts of this transmission as it comes out. Yeah, it might be a few minutes here. In the meantime, maybe we can carry on our conversation that we began earlier, or some other one. Okay, you were saying, Caven, um, could you explain the? Situation. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your guys' conversation there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're having a heck of a time getting your point across here. Yeah. So. Um, Have to apologize for all the technical delays. <laughs> okay, so let's try it again. And um, Kevin, your your question or situation that you're laying out there, maybe you can put it in an even more simple way so that the children can all understand as well as the children in us. Can you, mm -hmm. can you lay it out once again there while we have this uh, interlude well, here? Well, this, this line of thought I had is that, uh, you know, when Mr. Cash said all is interconnected, 
uh, it made totally logical sense because uh, uh, you know a lot for a lot of people um, it's you know we still there's a lot of people that still don't you know take it as as granted that you know we're not the only creations of the universe and I think people are having a really hard time um, grasping the idea that you know we are not you you know alone in this universe or in any other universe and uh you know it makes sense you know when mr cash said you know it's time it it the time is over for all and any kind of religion you know for any kind of dogma and i think it's really about peace and uh and abundance and th these were like the thoughts that somehow accompanied me uh the last few days um it's like in plain sight everything, but it's. Uh, I'm just thinking, why is it so hard to, to accepting, you know, uh, the very core of our existence, you know, the scientific core of our existence. So I thought maybe you you might have some thoughts on that, you know. When Mr. Cash, you know, repeats and repeats over and over again that everything is plasma. Um, this is, you know, this is this is the reason why, you know, why it's, I think, a really good idea, you know, to, to start with kids because these are the only ones who are still open-minded with their, with their, you know, with their creative thinking and consciousness and uh, understanding that everything is made of, of, of fields, you know, of, let's just call them, you know, for the sake of easiness, just magnetic fields. Is that, is that, I mean, is that the, the very, you know, the very, the very essence that, you know, kids can understand that magnetic fields that are all interconnected? Well, I think, um, it was in the previous workshop that, uh, Mr. Kesh showed the, the little, um, connects doll is that what it's called with the, the various joints that move and so on and each joint and even in between the joints there's these little balls that connect everything together and he was giving the analogy that these balls were like uh, um, the, the plasma uh, fields that were um, that were atoms essentially but they were the fields that were inside these round ball shaped sort of atoms that were attracted to each other and so on and that seemed like a good way to explain it i think if i was a kid and had one of those one of those uh, dolls i would go oh oh yeah that makes sense everything's connected to the same as these are connected except they're little tiny wee ones instead of these big ones you know so uh, I, I definitely could uh, um could identify Can you hear with us? that Yes, we hear you, yes. Mr. Kesh. Oh, we muted everything and we muted ourselves. Yes, yeah, so, now we are back on this. Just give us a few seconds. You see, you you got to realize, as long as we are on, I can explain. And when we fall out, we go, um, we go back on it later on. Um, is that children have totally different view about the creation and the created and the fields. So for us to be able to read children to understand put the camera is to try to see and understand in what language we speak to them. And that's why I try to use toys and um, uh, different things that children with it they find association. It's very much like the video you showed last week. Uh, it reaches children in a very very easy way and in fact there should be no difference for a child between a plasma of uh, whatever we call plasma and orange or that's why I brought an orange, we were looking at it earlier on. Then we see that the, the reality is so, so in front of our children that 
they have forgotten what they see in reality and what they, they would like to understand. So, in so many ways, we uh, express ourselves in the, in the, we express ourselves in the wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. You're there? Okay, so very lovely. So, we have to find and speak the language of a child. And this will be, is that live stream or? Okay. So, the child can understand what you're talking about. There's no use talking about the creation of the universe and how things came, when a child cannot relate yourself to it. Uh, a child plays with a magnet. He sees a magnet on the on the fridge. Uh, he says, "Oh, in the world, this is not this way. In the universe, it's not this way." And in so many ways, we see it even today. When you explain the logic in the language of the man, the man will defend it because he understands what he understood is correct. We have a very serious situation at the moment with such a thing, where. We explain the technology in detail, fundamentally, to the scientists. And when the... the can you hear me? They don't hear. Can you hear me? No, no. Uh, yeah. 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 So, okay. that the scientists at the highest level, when the government tries to lie to them, they immediately refuse to accept the position of the government. Because they understood what they, they understood is correct and it's opposite to what they've been taught. And now it's time to defend it. We'll explain this in the coming days because we, we have accepted to stand to a certain kind of, uh, what do you call it, withholding information till the time is right. So we have to do with the same with the children. We have to teach them the basic understanding of the creation of magnetic fields. In, in reality, uh, what we said from the beginning, magnetic fields are not the way they see it. This is how they see magnets. We have to explain, in the universe, fields like this does not exist. Fields exist in the universe in a round shape, but up and rotating. In fact, a plasma to a child should be an orange in rotation. But it rotates all the time. Mm -hmm. Then a child understands, and if he, you can explain, this is the bottom where you see there is a hole. When there is a hole, you can put something in it. So the in the hole end, the field goes through, and on the top end, when it's there on the head, that's where the field comes out. So a child should understand. This is it. If you if I put it like this, if I put the arrows which you showed earlier on one end, then the child understands this is the shape of a magnetic field. The field goes in and has to come out. What goes inside this orange as energy has to be able to come out of this sphere, uh, this orange. And whatever is kept inside is the energy which the child by eating it absorbs to his body. Then it makes sense to children, they understand. They, they can explain a plasma in the way it is in reality, in their life. So, we see this and we have to explain this way. For us to speak about creation and children in that level, even at 17, 18 years old, is too far-fetched. But if they understand the principle of the physics, understand the principle of the rotation, they understand in a simple way, if you have a magnetic ball, uh, this ball has to interact, and this ball has to show some effect in respect to another magnet. And then we see what happens. And um, Arwen was playing with some magnets this afternoon, just with the... Uh, can I have those? Because he was showing in a very nice way how magnets play with each other. Can I have the dish, please? Because then you are safe. You see, this is what it is and how magnetic field set to be. Yeah. This, uh, this is the shape of a plasma. 
if we can go on a block, they can see it easier. So, um, this is the shape of a plasma, and what it does, Armin uses a very <coughs> simple trick. And that is, he has decided, in his uh, way, what is going to be going in, and what is going to be going out. And what he decides dictates the direction that the plasma will flow. If we get this here, you see the plasma will start rotating totally in a different direction and motion. The two magnets here, I'm gonna get snapped. This is the best way. Hang on. So what happened? The field comes out of line. He has to attract. If the field of a plasma is rotated, you can see, if you see my hand, I don't need to do anything. And I can get it to turn as many fast as you like, as much as you like. In so many ways, there is no petrol, there is no fuel. It's just the interaction of the fields. And you see how easy it is? We can rotate, we can jump, we can see how the fields can play with each other. This is good when you have assistance, the finger of uh, almond and my fingers. So, you see, you can create motion. And then the child understands. Call this in the middle, Earth. Call this in the middle, the Sun. Call this, this, an atom. So, the child understands there is no motor in the plasma. It's the field which is inside it. When it interacts with other fields, it makes it to move. So, now, you try to tell the student, a child, at any age, you need a fuel tank and you need a motor. He says, I can move because plasma moves without a motor, I can do the same. I can decide I'm going back, I can push, I can attract, you can do anything you like with it. So, this is, you can roll it, you can roll it back, you can roll it forward. So, a child has to understand that magnets, like he, she sees or he sees on the, on the fridge, is made to be very much, as we said, for a toy, not the reality in the universe. So, they see this a magnet and it stays in their head. And they always associate a magnet with a flat sticking on the metal. This is what we have to teach. If we start showing them the alternative to this, this is very much like this, this is a ball. They have all of the children nowadays get these balls free or in different toys. To them, this is a ball. But if they understand, that this pole, if you open it, has nothing in it, then this is very much the structure of the plasma. You see, the child understands automatically it's empty inside. But where the field comes to slow down enough, it becomes matter. Egg, the hand, the feet, but millions and millions of them. So, we have to Clarify this for the children first. Uh, the, the, the video you made, the animation last week, was so precise. It was so exact and it was so easy. And it brought a lot of truth on. And then, the children have to understand, after a while, when this plasma is rotating, it loses its energy. It's like when you when you eat in your food, when the food is finished, you feel hungry. You have two things, you have to eat more, or you have to share your food with somebody or somebody's food that you can survive. So what the plasma does, it actually splits open. That's all it does. The plasma, in a very funny way, it breaks up into pieces. It totally breaks up, it opens up. But in the process of opening up, this is what happens to it, fragments, pieces and more pieces, and then more pieces, and then there is nothing left but pieces. Then these pieces come together again. So, this is what you're going to get. And then when these pieces come together, 
they come in two different sizes, one bigger and one smaller. So what you're going to get is very much, very similar to this position. You had a very big one, now you have a little bigger one and a little smaller one. Then this is what we call becomes the atom. When this blows up, it just loses its balance, then it becomes a bigger and a smaller. But what happened now is exactly the same. It's exactly the same process. Now you have two magnets, which is like this. One bigger, one smaller, but now we don't have a smaller one, we show it as the same. But these two will have a connection with each other. They are connected because there is a brother and a sister. I rotate this, the other one has to rotate. I rotate this, the one has to rotate. And then, the one which is bigger becomes the bus. So, as this rotates around, the other one has to rotate with it, but in different formation. And then, this, in this formation, this is what we call, in terms of physics, we call it an atom. So, when a big plasma splits, into a smaller and a bigger plasma, slightly smaller and bigger. Now, you become from one plasma to two plasma. And then this is the atom. And now, we come from plasma science into physics. Because there is a huge difference in the world of science. There is a big difference, as much as there is between biology and chemistry, there is difference between plasma technology and atomic physics. <laughs> or what we call physics. Plasma is plasma. Physics, as we call it physics, is a structure between atoms. And then, when you put more of these atoms together, in a way, now you become in the realm of biology, uh, sorry, chemistry. So, you come from plasma to physics, now four of them becomes chemistry, and then when you add two more to it, you become biology. So a child can see in a, in a parameter what is what. So you never talk about physics in, uh, with the biology how and how they are connected. So it's the same. You never speak about plasma and physics. Plasma has to be spoken on its own term because it has its own property, its own behavior, which, when two plasmas come together, show behavior of interaction, and then you find what we call physics. Then, as you said, when you get two of them, two small and two big ones coming together, now the four make what we call uh, chemistry, because they have to interact with each other chemically, in, the, in a way they have to share each other. What happens can, in chemistry is that the little plasma says, okay, you can have mine, I'll have yours, and then we are all connected. And then, when you add a third one to it, another atom, let's say this is what we call uh, oranges, and these are apples, now when we add a coconut, and with a smaller coconut, And he says, okay, you give me that one, I'll give you this one, and everybody gets mixed up. And now, you come to biology. There's a further addition, which then it becomes what we call intelligence, but it's too much for children to understand. So, in fact, first thing we have to do, we have to clarify to a child what we are talking about. We spoke about the plasma last time, and now we see the number of plasmas. When they interact, they we, as human being, over time, given them different name. One is called Susan, one is called Julie, one is called Alan. But, in fact, when we say Susan, it means there's a girl. If you call it the Alan, we know it's a boy. Now, in the plasma technology, in the physics, in chemistry, or biology, it's the same. Then, the interaction between the plasmas decides where we go. This is one of the biggest problems in the world of science. Because plasma is something which we have come across in the past, maybe 
30, 40 years, we have not had the um, understanding to give it its own house. And this is where most of the problem with technologies like us comes into operation. Because people cannot understand what is the plasma and what is atom. Because plasma is on its own a technology. Physics is a technology of mixing of two plasmas. Chemistry is the interaction of at least four plasmas, two big one, two a small one. If you have two hydrogen, we call it a molecule, because that's the terminology. And then if you had another dimension to it, that all get mixed up, and nobody knows who it is, but together we are one cell, this is what we call biology. And usually in biology, we see at least minimum four atoms because there is a reason for it. When you have an atom, four of them in the biology, one needs to hold everybody together. So the heavy one goes in the middle. It says, okay, I'm heavier, I can hold all of you with hands. One says, okay, I want to communicate with the others so that we see where we are. So that becomes the communicator. One says, I know how to bring energy, then becomes another element, and one says, oh, I have enough energy, if you shake me, I can shake and everything falls off. So, now we make what we call a molecule of the human race, what we call amino acid. So, in reality, this is how simple it is. But, as we understood the science over centuries, and a lot of people who were understood it, wanted to make it very complicated to show them they are very intelligent, they made it more and more complicated. And now we make it simple. You have a plasma, and that plasma is a very, very, very simple thing. It holds, as we said, inside it, last time if you remember, magnetic fields. So, the other version of what you see as a color ball is this. So, what happens? There we are. If you can see this, or I'll bring it more in that you can see it. This is now, this inside with the magnetic fields, curly fields. And then, this curly field has to interact. Now, this is a, a smaller one, and this one is a bigger one. So, it needs to interact with the big brother, that it's there, they came from the same mother. So, now, you see, it splits to a big and a small, as you saw, in atom. There is no difference. This way, when we look at it with the white balls, we call it physics. When we see it in a clear ball that we know what's going on inside the ball, we call it plasma technology. And then, these fields inside each other has to connect up. Then, this becomes plasma as gravitation and magnetic, because as you saw, magnets do two things. They come together, or they go away from each other. In, in terminology, we call them, because to look very clever, we have created a name for them, we call them gravity. Gravity is when you hold each other, you gravitate towards each other, you come together. So, if the magnet comes together, you see it, now it's gravity. And this is the simplicity of it. So, now we have a bigger brother and a smaller brother. If you can see it, they gravitate towards each other. And if I can show it with this, wow. Now you see a big and a small. And you see how they come together. So, let's, now we spoke, we explained the plasma in the past programs. Now, we understand the plasma. What is plasma? When plasma reaches interaction that it has to interact with another plasma, you enter at the point of tangibility, world of physics. And then it becomes totally different ballgame. It becomes all understood. Plasma is the way the universe works. Matter and physics is the way the man works. And in the universe, we don't see very much matters, 
on this small fraction, they slow down enough that they show themselves. Very, very small amount of plasmas that slow down enough that can be seen. It's like when you play hide and seek. As long as you can run and you cannot be caught and you can hide, you are plasma. Once you are discovered, you become matter, you become physics. And this is where a lot of children go wrong and physics become complicated. Then we can see the world of science finds new ways to teach, to learn, and to share knowledge. The one of the biggest problems with our children at the moment in the schools, be it from the first day they go to nursery to come out as a, even professors out of the university, is that they have to protect what they've been taught, even if it's lie and wrong. Because once they accepted it, they have to defend it. Because otherwise, oh, you're a stupid, you accepted the wrong thing. And then, this is what we find dogmas of peer reviewing and people saying what we say is correct and the rest of what we've seen in the world of science in the last two or three hundred years. And then, knowledge finds value because you have to protect it. Then, people find out knowledge has value as long as it is within the plasma of the Earth. You cannot sell a Mars bar or you cannot sell a bar of chocolate to the man in the space because sweetness has no taste to the man in the space. It's only for man because of his physicality. You cannot say to somebody from another planet, I'll give you a can of Coca-Cola. To him is meaningless because he cannot drink liquid. Because his fields are different. His fields are more into the center than on the edge. If he feels become further out than become yours, then he can enjoy a copper cord. That's all it is. This is where children have to be brought in to understand and not be confused. And the people who teach physics in the school, because they were taught the wrong way, they still carry on with the same thing. Because what we say, I'm a teacher, I know better, puts everything in Japanese. And then we see what's going on and what the process is. In time, then we understand, we come to understand where the magnetic fields come from, what is the creation, because now we understand the simple structure of the plasma. A single plasma is plasma technology, plasma physics. When plasmas interact, they interact totally different way than when the matter interacts. Because when you are in one of these wires here, in the middle, you haven't become a sphere yet. So, you will behave different way, you behave like the wires. But when you have become a totality sphere at the end, you have to behave what the plastic tells you, because that's, that's the end, according to your assumption. So, we try to open the world of science in a very, very simple way. You look through the ball, there is nothing in it, because that's a plasma. And when it becomes weak enough, it can be seen, then, at that point, it becomes matter. And the whole understanding goes, that how matters goes. I brought you something which has been years and years in, uh, in the Foundation, and we started showing it a few years ago, and a lot of people see, and they don't understand. And that is, this is a very simple explanation. This is how a plasma is. It's a ball, and I don't know if you can see the water liquid inside it. From the little black things, I bring it forward, if it can be seen, uh, you see little, little sticks. These little sticks are the fields which are coming out. And then, in the water, till they get to the wall, and at the wall, they become matter. So, this is a plasma but we play with a different way in, in the adult's world. And we feed it because it's a magnetic field. It can join up with some, and the ones who doesn't like, it doesn't, it rejects. It's very much like in the classroom. The children you like to play with, you play games with. And the ones you don't like, you reject, and you don't play with. The same thing happens with, uh, the same thing happens in the plasma technology. 
the ones who want to join are the same, then they join up and they play. And the ones who are not of the same, or they don't like to be in that position, they reject each other. And this is exactly what you do in your classrooms in the, uh, with your friends and your people you don't like, is the behavior of a person. And if you have more and more people around you, the stronger team you become, it's exactly the same. When the plasma absorbs more and more, the stronger it becomes. And that's all it is. And then, the whole start of the creation and created the start. Then, you don't ask the question, what was I, what is the magnetic field and what was the, where was it created? It's a bit of all the fields which come together and they can play. It's like if you're in the second class, you play with your mates and sometimes you go and play maybe with one friend in the third class or the fourth class. Because he understands you, he has some strength or understanding your level. Even though he was at your level before. The year ago, when you were in the second class, he was in the second class. Now he's a bit older, he goes to the third class, but you still can play with both your mates and one one's up. So if you want to understand the structure of plasma, look at in your classroom. The ones you like to play with, you come together to play together. So we call it gravity, you gravitate to each other. The ones you don't like, because they don't think about the same, they don't play with the same toys, and they don't watch the same cartoons as you do, and you have nothing in common, you refuse to play with them because there's nothing in common between you and them, then they become magnetical field, which means you reject. And the fields are the same. You play or you reject. And that's all it is. This is the plasma. This is the way scientists have to, and teachers have to start teaching children. And then, when you speak, when you think in the future, you won't think about the fish. Because fish is a flat. You think about an orange, which can rotate on its axis. So, this is how we end up this session, and I hope we open your eyes a little bit more in the world of reality and creation. But, as time goes in the future programs, we'll teach you more, that hopefully, within a year, you know as much as your parents do. So, any question? Uh, Kevin, is there any questions from your end there with... Um have there been any um, questions from kids or mothers or other people in the universe or from yourself, perhaps? Well, no, I just wanted to thank you. It, it really makes me understand, you know, beginning to understand. And that's, I think that's, that's the most important thing to, because, you know, as you said to yourself, Mr. Cash, we are all children. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have any questions. Thank you. And uh, how do you see it continuing, uh, Mr. Kesh? It would be similar, along similar lines with uh, carrying on from where we left off, I, I guess, with the, uh, maybe we'll have an apple instead of an orange next time. Oh, <laughs> we'll evolve. Evolve, yeah. But next time I'll bring you a watermelon. It'll be big enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we... that'll, that'll be no. the, uh, the sun, I guess, the, the big okay. sun. Autonomy, one will be an orange like electron. So, mm -hmm. get it. So, um, children have a line of teaching to children is through their stomach. And uh, <laughs> orange and fruits is something they relate with, so we try to choose different fruits. Uh, first time I brought an egg, and this egg has been here for nearly two weeks, three weeks now. And soon will be chicken uh, coming out with a chick. So, we, we have to be reachable. Uh, to, for the children to understand. Don't forget the forces outside are very strong that you will say to the children, you're wrong. But if we see, sow the seed of the correct technology and science, then we'll see what happens as you've seen in past 24 hours. We have shown some amazing performances from plasma. And uh, we've seen how weights and masses can be changed with little than one gram or ten grams. 
because you have to show things to children. Children want to see to believe in a way they can play with it. And just to remind yes, people, yes. that would be at the uh, Spaceship Institute um, uh, live stream, which is on the same uh, Spaceship Institute live stream channel as this Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop. So people can tune in to the live feed uh, from the lab um, with the reactors going on there now. It's quite, quite exciting for those of us who are, who've been following that. Okay, so we'll okay. see, what, see each other at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Right. Yes. Once much. again. Good dreams if we go to sleep and nothing exciting happens in the lab. <laughs> yeah, some of us are having a hard time sleeping because there's so much excitement. But that's okay. Yeah, all the best and thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. Thank, okay, you, thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank you, thank you, you Kevin. Thank you, Rick Vince. Thank you, Mr. Bye bye. Thanks to everybody on live stream. That's the end of this Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop.